So Australia has had a bit of a rough history with introduced species, from the red fox introduced for sports, to rabbits now causing disaster for our farmers and wild dogs have to constantly protect their livestock from. And then there's the Indian minor bird, and let's not forget the African gumbergrass grass brought in as an efficient way to feed cattle that now threatens to spread bushfires throughout Australia's north. But perhaps one of the most well known is the cane toad. It all started in the 1930s where the sugarcane business offered a major export business for Australia, but this thriving business was threatened by one little critter, the cane beetle. Well, a lot of beetles. And grubs. Desperate farmers were at a loss as to how to control them. Enter the cane toad. A conference in Puerto Rico established the cane toad as a suitable biological control that was sure to do wonders for the cane industry. These guys ate anything that could fit in their mouth, from insects to slugs and even ping pong balls thrown in front of them. They ate everything that is, except the cane beetle, who stayed at the top of the sugar cane where the cane toads couldn't reach. Whoops. The toads were much larger than the native frogs and outcompeted them. And they bred like crazy, a female producing up to 40,000 eggs in a summer. It was 1935 when 102 cane toads were introduced from Hawaii to Queensland, but they spread fast and now threaten to spread even further. In 1945, a pesticide provided control for the cane beetle, but the toad had toxins of its own. Glands behind its eyes produced bufotoxin, which meant that predators were poisoned when they ate it. This threatens our precious native wildlife, including bilbies, crocodiles and black snakes. There were also concerns for children's safety, despite some children keeping them as pets. The public eventually took control into their own hands. Some methods were more brutal than other methods. And some people went out of their way to do their bit. But one professor, Peter Koopman, had an idea to use genetic engineering to prevent toads from producing female offspring, eventually breeding out the cane toads with no need for violence or deaths. With a lack of funding and a seven year life cycle for the toads, with several generations needed for the gene to be passed on, it would take a long, long time. Some good points for the toad is that they did kill off some feral dogs and crows learnt how to eat them by flipping them to avoid the poison. Some snakes also seem resistant to the toxin, providing evidence that somehow evolution may one day provide a way for these toads to live in harmony with Australian wildlife. In any case, there are lessons to be learned. Make sure introduced species will actually do their job and maybe look into the consequences before introducing crazy breeding killing machines into the wild. The end.